So cast your mind back to 2008, a little known company, Gruber, came up with a very clever way of converting a bike to an e-bike. Basically, they came up with a motor that installed in the C-tube in the form of a beveled gear, which is a bit like a worm gear, and helped turn the axle of the cranks uh, internally so that the motor itself was concealed. Now, there is a problem with this system, which is where to put the battery, particularly in around 10 years ago, you know, battery power wasn't what it is today. So concealing that system actually was quite difficult. But we did have a few products that came to market with that Gruber system, which became the Vivac system in around 2015-16. And no doubt the one that caught all the headlines was the one installed by the European under-23 champion, uh, Femke van der Driesche. She installed it in a cyclocross race, but unfortunately got, well, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your perspective, got caught and had to serve a six-year ban. And sadly, to be fair, retired from the sport. Now, what this meant for road cyclists is that you could finally ride a bike that didn't look but ugly. It didn't look like a cross between a mountain bike and a road bike. It looked like a road bike. It had the basic aerodynamics of a road bike. There is a question regarding the weight, but essentially we were able to get the look of the bike right. And that's not just the look, the look and the function, you know, the two for cycling go hand in hand. And one of the first to bring this to market, actually around the end of 2016, was Steinbach. The Steinbach Sonblik came out. Did any of you see this? Steinbach Sonblik. When I saw this, I was quite shocked at how integrated it looked. Yes, it used that Vivac system down on the C-tube. Now, I don't particularly like the way that the power unit is sitting so high, you know, so substantially high in the water bottle. I think that's pretty crude, you know, not having the option to take that off. But let's be fair, that was a damn good first effort. Now, there was also a UK company that tried to bring it to market, and that was the humorously titled Goat Bike Race. The Goat Bike Race came out around four or 5,000 euros around 2016. Again, pretty nice features. But we've got that rather clunky system of the water bottle there installed. Now there was another one in 2016, arguably even slicker, and that was the Typhoon E-Assist. Now this was around $10,000, 10,000 euros. It, it looks even better to my eyes than the Go bike or the Steinbach bike. But all of these bikes, by the way, never really fully made it to the marketplace. They, you know, they teased us with their designs but they never actually converted to a for sale available product. However, Vivax themselves did bring out in 2017 their Passione, Passione CF disc with their high spec 4.9 battery. That would be 200 watts for 200 minutes roughly. The price isn't that bad. Yeah, it's a little bit high, but you know, we know bike prices are sometimes ludicrous. It's around 6,000 euros. And what's attractive about the Vivax Passione is the frame in the high-end version is fully carbon fiber they've really tried to lighten the bike and they're claiming they're claiming that the overall bike for this e-bike package this road e-bike package wait for it guys 10.3 kilos that is pretty good let's let's be honest so given we've got this ba this battery problem you know where do we put the battery and given you know battery technology is only so good you know it's going to be pretty substantial pretty substantial in terms of size one really nice innovation from Fazua is to put the battery in the down tube. So the whole mechanism basically becomes concealed in the down tube. So this is called the Fazua Evasion System. So you've got your concealed battery, which I believe can be extended. You can have a user replaceable battery, and then you've got your main bottom bracket power transmission, 200 course cube. And cube have brought out using the same Fazua system, the Cube Agree Hybrid C62 SLT disc. Now, I think that word hybrid in there is a little bit confusing, but this is basically a road bike, as you see from the design. Again, they've kept the weight as light as they could. The overall weight, now remember that includes the four to five kilogram system, is 12.8 kilos, and they allow a lot of clearance around the front and rear to allow actually 36 millimeter tires. So you could turn this bike into a cyclocross bike or a gravel bike if you wanted to. And this bike is actually on the market. There's a cheaper version. Well, it's not that cheap, around about 5,000 euros or $5,000. And then there's an expensive version, you know, fully tricked out 
around about 7,000. Now, just this month, Pinarello are entering the same game. Pinarello are coming out with their Nitro. So Pinarello Nitro, they've just launched this month. Their specs are basically identical because they're using the Fazua system as well. You can see that Downtube has exactly the same. It's got a protector on there. They based this around their previous F10 bike. And I have to say, it's a pretty, pretty decent design. We've got the same specs, 250 watts peak, 400 watts. They claim that it will last around 2.5 hours sustained riding. The price is around 6,000 euros, $6,000. The weight is the same, around 13 kilos. I'm, so I'm, not, I'm not saying 13 kilos is the best, but given the battery is removable, you can reduce the weight. And I'm sure future developments will enable us to bring that weight down. Now there's one other bike that's just come out very recently, and this is a headline stealer. It's the Orbea Gain, the Orbea Gain E-Road. Now this is using a slightly different system. The motor is actually in the rear hub there. You can't see it from this picture, but it's the e-bike Motion X35 hub. But what if we had a bike that took away those excuses or limitations? What if we had a bike that concealed electric features so that they were invisible? Would that be more legitimate? Would it be more sexy? We are definitely at the doorstep of a new era. Electric bikes are for lazy guys. Electric bikes are for weirdos. Well, who cares? Some people need a better ride, a better way to commute from A to B, or a higher quality adventure. Some innovations are there. And regardless of condition or mindset, regardless of electric or not, bikes are still there to give us back that freedom. And that's powerful, right? Clearance on these tires is really fantastic, 40 millimeter clearance. The weight of the whole bike is pretty much the same, 13 kilos. The power is the same as the Fazua system, 250 watts sustained. But the brilliant thing about the Orbea system is it now brings down the price to realistic for regular riders. So their entry level is 1800 euros or 1800 dollars and the high-end bike is around 4,000 euros or 4,000 dollars. And I think that is really competitive. So what we're seeing is a shift in the market away from you know crude, uh, poorly powered, underpowered, badly designed, you know horrible e-bikes to things that look fully integrated. They look like a road bike. The weight penalty isn't really that bad. Yeah, there's still work to be done on that. The power delivery is good, you know, the power transfer is also good, how it integrates with your regular riding. And now the price is decent too. So really, I'm changing my mind on e-bikes. I wasn't an e-bike lover. I was thinking, well, what's the point of e-bikes? You know, you want to use your personal fitness. You want to struggle against, you know, hills. You want to struggle on the flats because that's what gives you fitness, right? If you're struggling, your fitness is improving. The more assistance you've got, the less gain you're getting from cycling. But I'm not sure I see it that way anymore, guys. Now I'm thinking, well, there's a place for e-bikes. You know, there's lots of areas where e-bikes would actually help lots of types of riders where e-bikes would help and who hasn't been in the position where they've used their energy you know they've got another few two or three hills to climb and they really can't face it or you know you've got five or ten miles still to get home and you're really struggling e-bikes could be a boon in those situations so in the last two years we've seen huge strides made in e-bikes and this is changing my mind to e-bikes. And I think these five bikes, the Vivax Assist, Passione, the Focus Project Y, the Cubagree SLT Disc C62, 
hybrid e-bike, the Orbi again e-road, and the Pinarello Nitro are really the forefront, the vanguard of changing our minds on e-bikes. Now, if you haven't changed your mind yet, you don't think e-bikes are any good, I'm sure you're going to tell me in your comments below. This is a hugely controversial area. But what I'm doing here is saying we're on the cusp of making e-bikes acceptable to regular cyclists. That is a game changer. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out our Patreon site. And as always, stay safe out there. Now, there's one bike I haven't mentioned so far, and that's the Cipollini MCM Squared. Now, if this bike is true to form, if they're doing what they claim, then they've hit this one out of the park because I cannot tell at all that this is an e-bike. Now, they're saying the motor is in the uh, seat tube and that the battery is in the down tube. I don't see any fixings online about the battery being removable. So in theory, could it be built in from the perspective of when that carbon tube is laid up? Could they have put the battery in there permanently? In which case, that's a very clever way to solve this problem. Of course, it does raise a question over user upgradability and also battery life. But let's ignore that for a second. In terms of integration, in terms of looks, wow, this is good. But because we haven't actually seen this bike in the flesh, because I can't find anyone who's actually ridden it, there's no real photos of it being actually used i'm just skeptical this is almost too good to be true so if you know of any information about this bike please post it in the comments below i will say however because it's cipollini and because it's cutting edge you know it's not going to be cheap the minimum price for this is around about eight thousand euros or dollars so it's going to be expensive guys <laughs>